and understand what we think are the best ways to structure your event so that you can pass on more money to the I'm, next generation I'm, I'm, without let, leaving let me, let me, taxes. Let me start you. You know, I'm not into an advisory thing with my stock market. I'm not interested in advice on my wills. I'm interested in information and getting it practically done. So um, we give you a, we give you guidance and advice on how to get the, the legal documents set up, but we do not have a legal license. We do not draft documents. If you want to continue to have the self-directed service that you have currently, but you want to have an official point of contact, then that's where we would have Dave Ryder come in. She would be, you would have her direct number for anything that you need on the account. You would call her. She would take care of your service needs. And additionally, she would be able to connect you with Nick, who would be able to help you uh, understand what, in our, in our best opinion, what we think your legal documents and or estate uh, documents could and should look like. Excellent. Let's do that. So I'll let Gay kind of introduce herself so she can tell you and I'll turn my camera off. Thank you for your time today, Ron. Um, uh, I do want to provide you a little bit of um, information about me, a little bit about my background as well. Um, I'm not in high school <laughs> or just out of high school. Um, I have over two decades of professional experience and the last 13 years is in financial services. Prior to that, I worked in a pharmaceutical and travel industries for a combined 10 years. I have a bachelor's degree in information technology, but I did not end up uh, using it professionally. From where? From I where? From where? Degree. From where? I'm from the Philippines originally, so I graduated from your degree. From Philippines your degree University. from your degree from where? From the Philippines, sir. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, St. Louis University. It's a Catholic um, university in the Philippines. Um, uh, I uh, lived there for the first 26 years of my life. Are you still and, a practicing um, Catholic? The United States. Are you still a practicing Catholic? I am. A, I am a Christian, um, sir, and uh, my entire family are. Um, I was. Uh, Catholic. I was sexually molested at a private Catholic high school. That's important. So That's important to, to understand how, how we who we're de how we're dealing with people. You know. Uh, most of my relationships are outside of the country. Um, Russians, Uzbeks have a different interest in legal affairs and in, in capitalism. Um, that's fine. I, I have no problem. I just want to deal with, with you or whoever's going to deal with it. I'm going to send you a copy of my will and all it has to be done is edited and put, and I just want to know if it's legal. And I want a legal digital copy of that that I can change change uh, beneficiaries at my own time. I, change, I have a lot of people and I change beneficiaries a lot. And I know as a lawyer or anybody, are you a lawyer? Do you have that background? I am not a lawyer, um, Mr. Um, uh, Don't, Marzua, but I do have um, a member of our team. His can you can you Ashton. draw up? Can you draw? Anyone can draw up a will. I mean, you don't have to be a lawyer. I can draw it up and put it in front of you. I just want you, your company, to say this is as legal as it is, and bam, it's it's very simple. You want a thousand, two thousand dollars for it? Fine. Questions? That, that's not something we do, unfortunately. So Draw up wills. Has, yes, even if it's why, a will. Why, why is it Scott Lingram said we can help you with drawing up your will and beneficiaries? Is, is Scott a, a member of Fidelity? Um, is this an employer of Fidelity in New Mexico? Yes. No, he's in Colorado, but he's my advisor. Yeah. He's my contact for my brokerage okay. banking account. Well, 
I want to apologize on behalf of Scott. Don't have to. Don't have to. He didn't do anything wrong. No need to apologize. Two times you apologize when you intentionally hurt someone or you feel like they're asking for an apology. I didn't ask for an apology. I'm trying to get this on a language basis, make it very short. It doesn't sound like you have anything to offer me. What we can offer you is the conversation and education that we have available to provide you. With Thank you. I appreciate that, but I, I don't really need that. I'm focusing okay. on my conversation, where I want to go. And okay. I'm, I'm not interested in selling, buying, uh, anything. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm a dinosaur in this world. Uh, okay. uh, to, to three women, diverse in this field is, is excellent. Everybody in banking seems to be female. The men have gone away. Thank God. So, uh, uh, you have the ability to record this, right? We don't record our meetings. You have the ability to record this language. We, we don't have the ability. We are not allowed to. Not allowed to? That's interesting. Why? Um, uh, it's not it's not something that we have uh, the ability um, uh, because of privacy for our clients. So it's nothing illegal or anything. It's you choose not to record it. I will have to check what the policy is exactly, but we don't have reporting capability on Zoom meetings. Okay. And, uh, in person meetings, we don't. Know. Okay. Okay. This is this is very. Uh, I'm a great person of transparency in filming and recording everything, my life, your life, and it, it keeps things policed. I'm in favor of that. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, would you have a problem if I recorded this? I don't have a problem, sir, if you want to. I don't have the time or inclination, but it's nice to know that you're doing that. So, I think we're done. Thank you. Okay. I mean, it's like, yeah. Thank you for your time as well. Okay. Appreciate it. Do you Hi. think I've been out of place or you think you have something to offer me or something? Well, the, the, the model that we have at Fidelity Private Wealth is really just a higher level of service. Um, it's an exclusive offering available to our clients clients with a minimum of $10 million um, here at Fidelity, and you qualify for the um, exclusive offering, and it's um, uh, provided to our clients by indication. Um, okay, okay, focus, and, uh, focus. I asked the question, do you feel like you have anything to offer me? I don't know the spectrum. I've tried to be as clear as possible with my communication. i uh, not yes. rude. I mean, I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, I talked to a guy John Veretti in Chicago about, I had trouble meeting with Scott and in emails and I couldn't get in touch. Very well handled. I mean, he listened to my dinosaur approach to life and he, he told me that the appointment was at two and I had it at uh, some other time. So, um, yeah. I mean, I said what I had to say. Do you have... Uh, I just felt like this was, this was presented to me as a, as, a, as a selling thing. And I've been through it with too many people. E-Trade, da-da-da-da, da-da-da-da. And they offer this wealth management. It sounds wonderful. Nobody can manage my money but me. I mean, you give your power away to somebody and you're not in charge anymore. And are you familiar with Timothy Snyder who wrote a book on freedom? Yale University. I took a course from him. Thank you. I hate to waste any more of your time. Um, we, we don't push on any products or, or service that you are not interested, um, uh, Ron. Um, and is it okay if I call you Ron or do you prefer... I prefer Mr. Ron. That's very nice. That's very Ron. personal. Okay. It's a very okay. nice touch, you know. So the differentiator here at Fidelity Private Wealth really is the ability to, to still continue doing what you're doing, deciding how you want to invest your money. It is really your decision to continue self-directing. And the differentiator of working on this side of our offering, where I am the lead advisor, is that we sell help. Help is all that we sell, nothing else. Um, Selling help. Okay. I don't mind paying for help. 
Let me tell you a problem I have with it. Don't charge a fee. And, and you tell me how much you want to charge for it. I have, a certain, have I have a certain amount of money, and I have a certain amount of relatives that don't know how to handle money, most of my relatives. And I'm thinking of giving a million dollars to a kid that doesn't know what to do with a million dollars. And I'm trying to educate them. I'm trying to get them into listening to these Zoom meetings. I'm trying to create a fund where they put in 5,000, I put in 5,000 for 10 years. And if he can stick with that for 10 years, he knows a little bit about money. What do you think about that? Do you think that's a good idea? Do you think your company can help me with this? I, most of these kids are international and they have trouble opening an account in the United States from Russia, Czechoslovakia, Palestine. And it's a difficult thing. I talked to Scott, he has no idea internationally how to do this. You are in international in Europe and places, right? We are international, and that will require some additional research on my side on how to go about Great. having um, assistance to provide them um, outside of the country, Ron. Great. You will research that and tell me how much I need to pay to get that information in. Um, a, a service with a fee or not, I will research, yes. And can you send me your name and email and a slight bio of you? And can, can we that, can we keep in touch by email? We can do that, absolutely. I think it has been a great step forward for womankind in the world, and especially Filipinos. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I <don't, laughs> I'm an acquired taste. Thanks, thanks for listening. I appreciate it. Uh, you have my email. Uh, this is something that's, that's very difficult. Uh, some of these kids from Russia felt uncomfortable about opening up an account in the United States because they felt like they were going to get pushback from their country. And this just stopped me in my tracks. I don't want to put money in Russia or, or any other country where these kids don't have control over. Okay. Say your name again. My name is Gay Meline Ryder, but you can call me Gay. Um, or okay, okay. I, I'm seeing it in writing. I have a little bit of dyslexia. What do you think about the great transformation in tech of Filipinos taking all over the tech help and, and Amazon and all that? Uh, in terms of what? Our contact center over in the Philippines? No, everybody. I mean, everybody's going to the Philippines. It used to be India. And Filipinos seems to be doing it better than than the Indians. And uh, Americans uh, don't have the patience for it. And so... <laughs> right. So I, I've heard a lot of um, uh, things about that. So first and foremost, it's the more affordable labor in the Philippines is very appealing for um, uh, bigger corporations. And uh, comparing the um, language, right, for Filipinos compared to Indians, um, uh, the Indian accent being so, um, uh, uh, I guess, very strong compared to Filipinos, um, uh, that's also one more preferred um, by co companies in the United States. Um, they also are very hardworking people. Yes, uh, yes. Very, I yes. can say that just for, you know, my own personal experience growing up poor in the Philippines, I've learned. How long have you been in the United States? Work. How long have you been in the United States? So I moved um, to the U.S. Uh, in 2006 when I was 26 years old. I was a single mom of two kids and I um, found the opportunity to work on cruise ships on board Holland America. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, so it was um, a base out of Seattle is our cruise cruise line Holland America. Right. I um, met my now husband working on cruise ships at that time as well. Right. We dated, we dated on board cruise ships for about four or five years wow. before we decided to get married. That's um, exciting. That's exciting. That's... Yeah, it's like a love boat story. <laughs> um, uh, so I the Be careful up. about the love boat tragedies because they do come. <laughs> uh, yeah, no it, tragedy. It's not all sunshine and roses. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so where did where did you first settle in the United States? 
so when when I finally um uh, we finally settled um uh, not working and living on the cruise ship. Um, he's from Seattle originally, uh -huh. so we moved to Washington State. Beautiful. We lived there for about twelve years before moving to Arizona last year. So uh, when I moved to Arizona, um, I started covering all of Arizona and New Mexico. Where where at in Arizona, Tucson? Um, uh, I am in um, uh, North Phoenix, northwest of Phoenix, North called Peoria. Okay, okay. I know the area. We're not that far apart. Uh, yes. Thank you. We can relate like this. I thank you for your story. And you will be my, my primary connection as we go forward? Yes, sir. Thank you. Anything else? That's about it. I will send you some uh, additional information about the team members. I know that you don't really need um, uh, those, you know, services, but you have a lot of complimentary services available at Fidelity Private Wealth. Even if you don't need them right now, um, just in case you do in the future, just know that they are available. Well, um, well, uh, well. Tell me, tell me, tell me. You're helping me out. This team thing. You mean your wealth management team is different? Scott has a team in Colorado. And y'all are separate or you, you We are separate. But you work adjacent to him. We we are completely separate from the team um uh, that are in the branches in the contact center. We're a uh, one smaller um uh, organization within Fidelity. So okay. We're exclusive. Okay. We have our, our own operations team. We usually process um uh, service requests um uh, separately from uh, the general um 1-800 line so normally how you would want to work with us going forward is to call our number directly um and uh, um avoid calling the 1-800 number because normally when you call them you will end up that would know, be that would calling. be great do you say can <laughs> i can i move my whole account over there you, you don't have to change your account, um, Ron. Your accounts are going to stay the same. The only thing that's going to change is when you log into your account, you're going to start seeing my my name and my face <laughs> on that little corner. So that's, that's, that, that, that may be what I want. I mean, because to, to talk to Scott, it takes five, six minutes of this and going through that. I mean, if I can email somebody and, uh, yeah. So let's let's proceed forward. Thanks for the information. I apologize for being myself. So thank you. No worries at all. Um, uh, I look forward to working with you. And um, um, again, um, I apologize for you. Uh, not apologize, but I'm yeah, sorry to right. hear about your previous experiences <laughs> with other wealth so, management. So Scott was <laughs> telling me he has 500 clients he handles. How many do you handle? I will only have a maximum of around 120 to 150. I am in my building of my book phase right now. I have uh, less than 60 households currently. Wow. All over the United States or did they localize you to the Southwest or something? It's lo only localized and exclusively in Arizona and New Mexico. And normally we would go to New Mexico as well from time to time as a team. And uh, when we come visit, we would like to have the opportunity to meet you. Wow. So that's, we have to also hold events over there. That's that's interesting. I asked a banker from Chase to go to lunch, and he says I need to get permission to do that. We won't need permission. Um, I, I just need to uh, just report it. And <laughs> well, my well and what, what I want to know is if I need protection of dealing with women. Should I have a bodyguard? <laughs> because, you know... I, I'm very late to this world. Uh, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for your time. It's been a pleasure as well. Just wait for my email, Ron, and it's uh, it's been a pleasure speaking with you today. Thank Take you, Ken. Appreciate it. Bye.